a super secret and extremely seductive, intricate ploy to interview people who don't want to be interviewed, who don't want to talk about switching jobs. They called it FUBAR. I have a referral link. Stick around at the end of the video and I'll tell you what to do. Welcome to Having Coffee with Smog, where we talk about tech, programming, and everything software development related. Today, I have something very special for you, a very exclusive thing. So grab your favorite beverage and let's begin. If you're thinking about having a career in software development, there's plenty to choose from. Companies may say what they want, but for truly talented people, sky's the limit and companies know this they will pay you handsomely with bonuses that don't leave much to be desired this creates an interesting dynamic when rumors about the perks run wild more and more wannabe programmers knock on the doors of the biggest and most famous companies out there because let's be frank, who hasn't heard about companies like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, or others, right? They are the biggest, the best places to work for. And not only they have the best salaries, the best bonuses out there, but also, and sometimes that is actually more important for some people, there is this prestige that comes with having a position in one of those brands. Every day, thousands and thousands of resumes fly through internet to all of these companies. Only a selected few will get a their chance to prove their worth in an on-site interview. And yeah, right now, more of an online, but still in person. These processes are quite long and thorough, and just because companies have so many interested candidates, they can have their way with you. So you can agree to rules of this game and accept that you have very slight chance of winning. Or you can say, I'm gonna win by not playing. Even the biggest corporations know that. And they still might want you if you're a good fit. They are, sir, to say, interested in getting you interested. So, what do they do? Let me tell you a story about the short affair I had with a company called Google. You might have heard of them. They do this little thing called internet, quite a lot of it. Of course, as many of you, I wanted to work for them and I applied a few years back without huge expectations. And as you might have guessed, nothing happened. A few months down the line, when I already started working with Amazon and was, you know, perfectly happy with pursuing this new career, this new goal, Google replied. And they messaged me out of the blue and said, you know what? We are interested in flying you to an on-site interview in Switzerland. Sure, but, you know, thanks, but no thanks. I still want to work with you sometime in the future, it's just not the right timing for me. Google and other companies are of course, you know, very aware that a direct message in such form is often very long shot. So they came with another plan, a super secret and extremely seductive, intricate ploy to interview people who don't want to be interviewed who don't want to talk about switching jobs or even, you know, think about it. They called it FUBAR. It's a hidden secret web page containing challenges to solve. If you get them right, there is a high chance of getting a job offer at the end of it. Did I mention it's invite only? You cannot just go to foobar.withgoogle.com and start solving away. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. You have to get invited by the man. <laughs> and let me tell you, it's no ordinary invite. It's not a message in your inbox or a spam folder. And it's not a phone call or a LinkedIn message. It's even not a long forgotten colleague messaging you out of the blue. No, dude, this is really crazy. Imagine this, you're busy with your day, coding away, looking things up online, you know, Stack Overflow, maybe a little bit of Googling, and suddenly, 
the Google web page kind of opens up. Shivers run down your spine because white website that Google always is suddenly has this huge black bar. What the hell, dude? What's going on? And the best part is this is not a static uh, search that everybody can just make and get to the place where Google Full Bar Challenge is. No, no, no. Google tracks what type of searches you are making. And if they are, you know, aligned with what they are looking for, you know, in a developer, ha, they will show you the Fubar challenge. People tried searching for it for days using different phrases and guess what? No dice. Google is extremely smart about deciding how to, you know, show it only to the people who are right fit for their challenge. And <laughs> Fubar was started in 2014 as a side project for Google to help well, hire engineers, I guess. And it seems to be still working today because I've got an invite. Okay, so let's take a look what this Fubar is and how to play with it. So what do we have? Well, this is a very nice little nifty environment that kind of mimics Unix system in the browser. So by typing help, we can learn what comments we have available. And there's quite a few of them. And what happens is we are in this home directory that contains two files. By reading those files, we can learn a little bit about the backstory and also we can learn what are the commands available. So then we can go ahead and type in the request that starts a new challenge and this challenge will be time limited. We will only have 48 hours. So this is not a very pressing time, but it's, you know, it's not unlimited time for solving anything. So first challenge is called Braille translation. And this challenge is about translating uh, strings to a binary version of a word that then gets sent to a special printer. So this special printer is able to print Braille, but it has to be given input in a way that it can understand. So long story short, this is a pretty simple challenge. I won't show you the exact uh, solution of it, but you can learn that there are two languages supported by Fubar um, Challenge. You can either write in Python or uh, go ahead and write your solution in Java. That's the alternative you can go with. You can then see that we have some test cases that are provided for us uh, down below. And these test cases you can just copy uh, and put it in your uh, environment. Then you can come up with a solution and test it against those test cases. However, there are a couple of test cases that are hidden from you and your solution will be tested against a couple of hidden uh, test cases that you don't know. And now we have two solution files, uh, solution Java for Java and solution Py for Python. I could write in either of those. I'm gonna choose Java because this is the language that I'm more familiar with. And yeah, you can see that the, there is a template for you to fill with your code. And in order to edit the, the file to be solved, you just type in edit solution and then you go ahead and you can and just put your code in here. So I'm just gonna copy this out and put it in my um, desktop environment. I'd rather have my solution tested here than constantly copy it back and forth between the environments. Quickly look up the Braille and what are the combinations for the Braille letters. And then I can write in my solution, put it in and copy it back. Uh, so the solution is here, it's pasted down there. And I'm gonna uh, now verify. So this is the command verify uh, solution.java and verification of the solution happens. Now we'll see if there are any tests that are failing. Oh, no tests have passed. So now I can submit my solution with submit solution.java. And if I'm ready, it will just a confirmation. Yes, so let's submit the solution and let's see what happens now. Oh, there is nice animation of a bunny. <laughs> so this is the first level, it's complete. I'm now on level two, challenges left to complete on level two, two. Okay, so 
each level has a couple of challenges. It can be one or more. And as you can see, uh, there are five levels to progress towards the end. So I haven't finished uh, all the levels just yet um, because, uh, you know, I only have this many hours in a weekend and I don't want to do it during the work week in case there is something really, you know, serious or uh, requires more time. Um, but what I already found out is that after a level, after completing level three, you may be asked for your contact information just in case there is something waiting for you. And this is it. This is the FUBAR challenge. And, you know, I must say that I really enjoyed every little bit of it. <sighs> it's not only, you know, neat little things like colors and operating system they have created for, uh, you know, us to play with the rabbit uh, ASCII animation or anything like that. The challenge is also, you know, <laughs> progressively getting higher, harder as, as you go. But I think the most intriguing and interesting part was the exclusiveness, the eliteness of it. It's like very neat, neat little thing that is prepared only for few selected people. And now, as promised, the referral link giveaway. So how to participate? First of all, and of course, you have to be subscribed to this channel. And in order for me to see it, you have to have public subscriptions enabled in your Google account. So make sure you do that. Second thing, you have to make a comment under this video that you're interested in participating and tell me why it is you who should get the referral link. And whoever has the best answer wins. You're getting it. You're getting into the Google FUBAR challenge. You can try it yourself. And that's all for today. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.